Hello everyone, uh, it's your favorite Sigma, and by Sigma, I mean a summation male, <laughs> and uh, today I wanted to ask the question, um, is math created or discovered? And it's kind of like, okay, what do you what do you mean by that? And it's kind of like you would think that it's an easy question. Oh, of course it's discovered. But I mean, I don't I don't really know, guys, like <sighs> take take one example. Take one example, PEMDAS. The order of operations when doing arithmetic. Why does it have to be that way? It's kind of arbitrary, isn't it? Uh, in in some sense. Like, of course you're still doing the math. You still have to go through every operation. But why is it, you know, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division addition subtraction and stuff like that um i mean i guess that's not the best example right because when you really get into higher math and stuff like that you you don't really encounter that many numerical calculations what you really encounter for the most part is just equivalences between uh, different sorts of operations. But I mean it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to explain right <laughs> but it's like you're you're not necessarily adding numbers you're you're taking usually symbols that represent some, at least in applied math, right? That represent some sort of way the world works, like in physics or engineering. And I don't know, the numbers really aren't that important. Like... I don't know, I, I think of, of calculus. Calculus is is not important because it necessarily like allows you to to calculate numbers in any sort of more precise way or something. It's just an operation which allows you to look at the change and rates of change of things, right? I mean, I remember when I was like 16, 17, and I first learned about the fundamental theorem of calculus, which all it tells you is that, um, you know, what derivatives are and the fact that um, an n an antiderivative uh, is just if you take the derivative of that you get the original function you had it seems simple but it's like again it's not really about being able to to calculate it's about what that long S represents or what the dy dx or the little apostrophe over f of x represents, right? And once you see it geometrically, like, bro, once I saw, like, integrals and derivatives geometrically, how it's the tangent line to a point and or the area under a curve, I was like, 
I cried, bro. Like I said, I cried. Like, because, I don't know, you shouldn't be able to, to define an operation for that to me for some reason. It just seems so strange. Um, because, for example, technically what a, a, um, integral is, for example, you're just taking a whole bunch of lines, or in the, in the case of Riemann, some squares, and add it, summing them together, but between any two points, you actually you know, have to do subtraction if you have a definite integral. Uh, and, of course, <laughs> indefinite integrals, we, I think everyone, like, got, um, has gotten points off for not writing plus C after an indefinite <laughs> Um, but, um, uh, yeah, but why is that the case? That seems just so convenient, right? It seems just like, and shout out to, to, you know, Newton and Leibniz that, you know, in, both independently discovered this through different geometrical methods, but like, it's still just like, again, calculus is OP. Do we, did we just make it up or did we discover? I mean, it seems to be, um, just an inherent way in which we describe nature. I mean, the symbols don't really matter as long as the underlying logic is sound. And that's what I think is a big part of the confusion of the question itself. It's just that people get too tied. And, you know, this is actually, I think, one of the things that a lot of teachers maybe don't realize about their students in math is that people get too tied to the symbols. You know, if you have like a a line FG or and you do some type of transformation whatever to it and it's now GA GF or whatever let's say people will be like wait but I thought it was FG and I'm like it's not about the symbols and it's like I I don't know sometimes like when you look at hyperbolic geometry and I actually, for grad school, we actually had to read a theory of parallels by Lobachevsky. And you realize, like, you know, how, how can I say, I'm going to try my best to say this for non-math nerds, but all of Euclid, at least in, in Lobachevsky's planar, because it is planar. I remember my professor being like, don't think of it in 3D, but it's like, I, like, I, like, it's hard not to think of, like, a line in, in hyperbolic geometry as being on the sphere. Especially since in in hyperbolic geometry, bro, um, any three angles in a triangle are actually add up to less than 180 degrees. So, it's like, I don't know, man, shout out to geodesic, shout out to, to Einstein, because, like, straight line man it's a straight line I don't but like once again you get to the question of it's like like 
Yes, all of Euclid works. What matters is the angle of parallelism. Right? I think if I'm remembering correctly, the angle of parallelism for Euclidean space is, you know, zero or 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 two pi I think and then for hyperbolic space it's less than that don't quote me on that it's been like three years since I first learned that but um yeah but it's just this the like like, I don't know, for so long, Euclid was like, this is the math, this is the way we think about logic, right? But if you think about, like, the parallel postulate, bro, that's more like, like, a, a, a theorem, it's not a postulate, like, <laughs> how, how, how do you know, you know, only one parallel line can can uh go between a point why can't it be infinitely many and that's where you get geodesics no I'm just <laughs> but that is where they become useful that is where like hyperbolic space comes from and like um you know, I, when I, when I think about that, I do think there is a sense in which we discover it in the sense that, like, it seems like it was always there. Like, hyperbolic space was always there, and we know what, how important it is to stuff like special relativity and and stuff like that and general relativity i think too um but again is it just a model that's good enough to describe the world or is it really describing the world just in a in a compact symbolic form I don't really know because if you look at the real world, you can write an equation, but, you know, the world itself isn't, like, the world isn't, I don't know, as binary, I think, as um people make it seem in the sense that like there's a lot of stuff that's uncertain it's more like analog i think computers have also sort of taken away some of the magic of like just being in the world even if you know about like higher level math like i think it pun intended kind of has us think in binaries just because we can model so much of the world with it but uh yeah i think somewhere in between as you know as much of a cop out as that is i think you know um Somewhere in between is probably the correct answer in the sense that um, the symbols that we, we use don't really matter, but the logic seems to be there. Um, although you know who's to say that some 
being smarter than us thinks about math in a completely different way um or has entirely different ways of describing math as we do maybe there's a way to do um you know integrals or derivatives or like prove one of Lob Lobachevsky's um conjectures or theorems that we don't know about um to, uh you know what if like Xenorp from the planet Gloopthorpe <laughs> has methods that we don't know about Anyway, man, maybe I'm just rambling. Maybe this means nothing. See you guys. Bye.